I'm going to go ahead and build this uh, PCB I picked up pretty recently. I, I made this my own design. Hopefully it doesn't explode on me. Um, it does have a few issues, but I guess being the first version of its kind, they usually do. There are a few things I already want to fix, but I figure, you know, let me build one, make sure there aren't anything, any other issues before I keep going. But for those who don't know what's going on, um, my cat just got up from a nap and he's apparently making a lot of noise. But this PCB is a new version of this one. I'm sure you've seen me use this around a few times. This is just a cheap little power supply I made to supply power to Game Boys and to measure the power usage while I'm using it. Um, I had a few issues with this one, namely the fact that you have to use a little... I, I, I forgot to break out this uh, potentiometer, so you have to use a little screwdriver or a spudger or something just to adjust the voltage on it, and it's a pain in the ass. Another thing, this thing super sucks at putting out anything more than two and a half watts, so whatever. Anyway, I found this new module here. It's upside down, excuse me. Um, this works very nicely for powering lots of things. Um, it has on and off constant current and constant voltage. Uh, right now I guess it's set to about 8.27 volts, but that's going to change when I remove that potentiometer. Anyway, um, my biggest issue with this particular uh, unit, oops, is that, oh, it was set to, excuse me, it was set to 12 volts. It's reading the input battery voltage. Uh, is that this unit does not work on a single lithium cell. You need at least, keep bumping the camera, I'm sorry. You need at least four and a half volts for this thing to operate properly. So what I've done, that was my uh, other video from a while back, this circuit. That's what I was testing out here. This circuit, which still hasn't exploded by the way, is what I implemented on this PCB. So I'm gonna go ahead and, I mean, I'm just gonna reuse these 18650s, why the hell not? Or not, excuse me, TP4056 modules. Because, I mean, I don't, this circuit has already done what it needed to do. this way I can abuse these cells in something else. All right. So I don't need these switches. I actually found a um, four pole switch here that I'm going to use. This I found at a local electronics store. This is the one I found online. Unfortunately, my PCB only works with this one at the moment, but I'm gonna update it to make it work with this one. Uh, the, the issue is just a simple matter of it physically does not fit in the cutout that I made for it. So that's one of the issues. These should fit in the same, but because the contacts on this one are longer, I was just able to bend them to get it in there. And that'll work. When I made this PCB, I did not have this switch in hand, so mistakes were made, but that's okay. I'm also probably going to run this thing off these batteries for testing instead of 18650s. So I threw these everywhere, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and solder these down first. It's probably an issue with that, hopefully not. I'm going to trim this one. Just to make sure it doesn't interfere with the switch. Ooh, I forgot a component. I gotta go grab something in a second here. Thought I grabbed everything. 
I was mistaken. these lined up as best as possible. And I know it's not soldered down properly yet, but that's okay. And because this thing uses three 18650s, I, uh, I made sure to face them all inward so that, you know, you can't accidentally plug into them because, I don't know, that didn't seem right. I don't have a good reason for you, except that it seemed dangerous to only charge one at a time. When you can charge all three at a time. Though in hindsight, I should be swapping out these resistors. That is not soldered down. Okay. So that it doesn't charge at a full one amp, because... If we do all three of them at one amp, oh, that's out of focus, I'm sorry. You know, it's going to be pulling three amps, but I like to live dangerously. So I think we'll be okay. All right, it feels soldered down, but it doesn't look soldered down, so I'm going to add a little bit more solder. But I guess the nice thing about using my own port is it literally does not matter, um, you know, if you want to use the micro USB or the USB C or whatever. It should all work the same. So for those that haven't seen the the video where I tested this circuit out, the idea is that I'm using three electrically isolated switches to switch these three modules from series to parallel and I'm leaving the grounds floating on all three of them. That way uh, when my circuit is on uh, they are all in series and yeah it should be fine. Oh, I'm soldering to the wrong PCB. Oh well. It's not a big deal. Anyway, it'll switch them all to series when the circuit is on to power my power supply. But when the circuit is off, it switches them back to parallel so that they can all charge simultaneously. Because the, um, the negative input and negative output on these modules are connected together. So if you were to put these in series, you'd end up shorting out two of the three modules which is definitely not good, by the way. In hindsight, I should have made these all through hole and I could have just used pin headers to connect this. It would have looked clunkier, but It'd be a uh, easier connection. All right. soldered down. Last one. You know what? I'm actually going to go see if I have... No. No, I'll use this one. Never mind. I already tested this one. I know it works. I don't want to have to try and desolder one of these stupid things. I'd rather just use the USB-C module and Move on. Okay. 
For what it's worth though, if you're building one of these, I recommend the micro USB modules. Because the USB-C ones are through hole, so they have a little bit of a protuberance on the bottom. It just means that you can make the micro ones flatter than the USB-C ones. So potentially easier to solder. Though functionally they are identical, so it really does not matter. Popped at the last second. <laughs> Might have been air escaping, so. Okay. There's that. Now I want to go ahead and solder the stuff on the bottom, which is literally just two resistors and a USB Type C port. This port on the bottom is the charge port. So this is hopefully going to work fine. I'm thinking that I'm going to use a little bit of flux. And what the hell, let's try the flux pen, huh? The flux pen is not delivering a lot of flux. Flux pen has very little flux to give. Oh, that that's awful. That is a solid short across all of the pins there. regular flux. And that is crooked as hell. Let's see if I can move it. better. Not good enough, though. Now, let me get a big solder blob on these. The port itself is crooked down. Ugh, I'm not having a good time. That's better, I think. Hope it's not shorted out. It's hard to tell with all this flux. Oh, no, it looks good. Okay. I'm going to pause, take a quick break. Oh, no, before I do that. I'll let that cool for a sec. I've got to desolder the um, potentiometers on this thing. Which I don't know the easiest way to do it aside from just trying to rock it back and forth. So there are two on here. Um, one is for the current control, one is for the voltage control. I'm 90% sure I got the right part. I really hope so. I should have checked this beforehand. 
I'm pretty sure these are 50k pots. If not, I'm going to have a really bad time. But we're probably good. Those are the same part, yes. So now let's use my siren braid that I never trimmed again. Because why would I try and make it easier on myself by cleaning up after myself? and some flux. So the idea was to use some M3 standoffs on the board and then just connect this up with, uh, you know, just dead bug the wire, wiring. And, uh, I don't know, it should work. But I don't have any M3 standoffs yet, so I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I ordered them. They're not here. And speaking of parts that are not here, I also do not have any more 18650 holders. So I might have to salvage those from another one of my projects. Conveniently, the power supply that this is replacing has two. So I'll just need to find one more after that. I'm not having a good time with this. Usually this braid works fine without having to dip in the flux. Great, now I have flux all over my finger. I don't know why I soldered that from that side. I don't know. I'll worry more about that one later, I guess. Like I said, since I'm just going to be dead bug wiring it, and I'm inserting them one at a time, I don't even have to desolder these. Whatever, I'll come back to that. Now, I'm going to go in and take a quick break, uh, clean up all this flux and uh, go get the fuse that I forgot to grab ahead of time. We'll be back in a moment. All right, so I went ahead and cleaned this thing up. Um, I went digging through my parts drawer. I found a fuse that I can use. It's, it's not really what I planned. I think it's a little bit under spec for this application, but it should work. Um, I had originally picked this module because it was able to deliver quite a bit of power. In fact, I was able to use it with an RC battery to power either my modem or my router and I have another module, of course. Uh, so I can power both of them during a power outage or even an external hard drive or something. But um, all I had was a 0.75 amp fuse, which is a little bit low for this application. 
you know, if I wanted to use it for that, we'd be able to use it here. But I guess on the same, on the other hand, it is rather plate safe. Holy shit, that is. Oh my god, these are. It doesn't say on here. These are super tiny. If it does say on here, I don't see it. Holy crap. Oh, I know what I bought these for. I think I bought this for my uh, Switch. For my Joy-Con. Explains why they weren't open until I opened them just now. Ugh. Holy crap, these are tiny. Whatever, I think... I think I can work with this. <laughs> oh my goodness. I kind of expected those to be twice the size, to be honest. But it's okay. I'll make it work. I need some new tweezers though. These It's like sticking to my tweezers. All right, that'll work. Just solder the damn thing on sideways. Oh, no. No, that only works if you actually solder both sides. Oops. There we go. It's beautiful. And it's sideways. And I love it. Okay. So I got this cleaned up. It looks good. I'm pretty sure it's not going to short. So I'm going to go ahead and solder on the anchors. And yeah, I got all four. I'll go ahead and solder on these resistors. These are not needed if you're using a USB-A to USB-C power supply. But if I ever want to use a USB-C power supply to charge this, these resistors are required. And the uh, footprint that I used allows you to use either surface mount or through hole. I'm using through hole because that's what I have right now. I keep forgetting to order more surface mount ones. But in this case, there's space, so it doesn't really matter. Ooh, focus, there we go. leads off. And don't forget to engage safety squints when you do that because those things usually fly off at uh, the speed of sound. I'm just going to clean up those solder joints. All right, I believe I have everything soldered except for the module, the slide pots, and the switch. So I'm going to go ahead and do the switch next. 
So, and again, I had to bend the leads to fit this one in, but on the uh, final version, I guess, that shouldn't be necessary. So hopefully I never have to desolder this switch because I don't think I could if I wanted to. Just touching up these joints because they look kind of look like they could use a little bit more solder. There we go. That is uh, probably not how you're supposed to install that. But I'm happy with it. Okay. Next, the uh, part that makes this whole thing worth it. I had to order these from Mauser. I could not find them in stock anywhere else. Um, these are 50k slide pots. Well, okay. I found 50k slide pots in stock plenty of other places, but I could not find these ones. And I wanted these ones um, for a multitude of reasons, but the most important, you'll notice I ordered a shitload of them. I plan to use them in more projects. But anyway, the biggest reason that I wanted these ones in particular was because I just wanted to order the PCB and that's the footprint I already had. I didn't want to have to make something else, but those will go in just like that and I'm super happy that they fit that perfectly. Hindsight, I should have soldered them on first, but uh, we'll make it work. So those look fully seated on that side, and on that side, yes. So I'm not too concerned about missing the um, 18650 holders because those are the last things to get soldered on anyway. I figured there might be some leads sticking through that have to be cropped flush. So it's not, not a big deal.
All right. Boom. Now, I should have labeled these. I don't know which is which. One of these is voltage, the other is current. I'm just gonna leave them both right about the middle. And, uh, oh, I was digging through my uh, parts bin. I found some motherboard standoffs. And, oh man, this drives me nuts. But the uh, screw side is fine threaded, whereas the standoff side is coarse. So I have, I went through my hardware, I found some fine threaded screws and nuts, but I don't have any coarse nuts. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, but I did find some, I found two standoffs that have coarse threaded on the uh, screw side. So I can use these in the meantime to hold that together. And I think it'll be good. But I still got to do some soldering first. I did order the actual correct parts. They just haven't arrived yet. Um, I also did have to trim the leads on the LCD, just the bottom. Otherwise, they end up getting real close to these ports and not wanting to short on anything. Okay, so now I got to solder in these six wires that I went ahead and pre trimmed. Hindsight, I should have used these ones, but whatever. I'll save those for another project, I guess. And yeah, it's a good thing I cleaned up all these solder holes because I'm just filling them with solder again. Oh, but what I should do, before I even get started, I should tin these. Because this is stranded wire. So if, I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud while I'm doing this. If, uh, if this power supply works as intended, I will go ahead and share the, um, the files. But, heads up, the files I'm sharing will be untested because, like I said, there are a few things I need to fix. I just know that off the bat. And I'll share my bill of materials too, of course, so that you can assemble this. But... Just a heads up, it will be testing, or if you're not about that testing life, you can uh, wait for me to make my changes and order another board and build another prototype. Three more. Almost done. See, that's exactly what I didn't want to have. solder is molten and uh, went to stick it in the hole and then all the wires separated.
Okay, last one. I'm going to go ahead and solder these into my PCB. We're going to test it out. And this switch makes this thing super awkward to handle. Yeah, go figure. I labeled the uh, underside of the PCB. which one's voltage and which one's current, but I didn't bother labeling the side that I can actually see. I should have did that one first. Glad I double checked that one. That would have been an annoying short to troubleshoot. Speaking of annoying, Not even focused, I'm sorry again. Ugh. So frustrating. So now, if I power this with my battery, there it is. Turn it on. I think this one's voltage. No. Oh, that's that's current. Okay, so this one's voltage. I want to swap these. I don't know why I did it this way. Oh, that's cool. When you ramp it up that quick, it uh, doesn't like that. Not at all. Now it's not working. 
Well, shit. What did I blow up? That goes in that maybe Hmm. I killed it. Well, there you have it. Thanks for watching. No, I'm kidding. I'll be back in a minute. All right, take two. I got a new module soldered in. Uh, this time I flip flop the wires so that the top one on this one goes to the bottom one on here and vice versa. Uh, the middle one still connects to the middle, of course. Uh, but I've just got four more wires and then the batteries to solder up and then we're good to go. And uh, hopefully this one doesn't explode. I have no idea why the other one exploded yet. Still got to do some digging around. See if I can't figure that out. But uh, I guess future reference, don't raise or lower the voltage that quickly and it probably won't explode. And yeah, I'm using wire to assemble this instead of header pins because I have a feeling I might need to rewire stuff or I don't know, undo this or something. I don't know. But everything does line up. Don't really know what I'm doing. Okay. Just do it the same way I did the other ones. And by the way, I know, I know I said something different earlier, but until I figure out exactly why the first one exploded, I'm not going to be uploading the files for this thing. Because I don't think, I mean, I don't mind, and I'm sure most of you guys don't mind, you know, playing around with unguaranteed beta hardware, basically. But... I was going back and forth on this one for a while anyway because I'm not so sure that I trust my schematic. But, you know, if you just handle it the wrong way and you blow out the module, I don't think that's... I don't think that's good enough. There we go. I don't know why that one wasn't going in. favorite thing about living in an apartment is uh, all the noises you get to share with your neighbors. It's just so wonderful.
Oh, I don't know why I just turned that off. I still need that. All right, so now I should be able to tuck all those wires in. first though. I designed this to use um, whatchamacallit, banana plugs instead of just soldering straight in there. I figured that would be a nice worthwhile feature. But unfortunately I made the holes entirely too large. Or I bought the wrong parts, I'm not sure. Either way I'm not happy with how it is. Those should just be able to screw down. Shouldn't need to wire them in. They should already be wired in. And let's wire up some batteries. So, oh uh, man, of course those are like a hair too short. That should be off. So, and again, final product is going to be using 18650s, but we're just going to test it with these ones for now. Because in the off chance something explodes, these batteries have a lot less potential energy and should therefore not explode as violently. But uh, don't quote me on that. Now I'm going to use some of this wire here. Oh, that's not the right one. That's the one I want. It is a terrible solder joint, but it's good enough for this. And the last one. 
All right, so I got the batteries connected. Leave the soldering iron on just in case. And I'm going to insulate these connectors, or connections rather, because I think having those flopping around is probably dangerous. Probably a bad idea. enough for now. I think I should be ready to try it out. So uh, I guess hope this doesn't explode. Well that was anticlimactic. Let's at least see if it charges. Okay so it does charge. That's good, I guess. Oh, there it goes. That was interesting. All right, so... Okay, it was on. Batteries are at 10.5687, whatever. I keep... Oh, didn't even see it. I'll switch that back to the output there, and we can adjust this. So it goes as low as 0.5 volts. And I think it goes up to like 30 something, 33 or 35. I'm not gonna bring it up that high though, because it popped and well, the last one popped. And I'm terrified of blowing up my only other module. And just to verify, I guess I'll pop those in there. You can see it's accurate enough. Let's put a load on this thing. Let's see if it works. Uh, shoot, I don't actually have anything here I can test. Oh well, I'll come back to that in a second, I guess. So, one of the cool things, I found this a long ass time ago. I don't really know what to do with it, but I guess this is basically what I bought it for. So if we flip this on, set it to 5 volts, close enough, because this has a micro USB on it. Plug in one of my Arduinos and see what happens. So it powered up, and you can see it's pulling very little power. Play with the constant current thing. If I bring that all the way down. Oh, cool. So I don't know how well you can see that. I bring that down. It starts cutting off the power that's available. Oh, and my batteries just died. Or my module died. I think it was just the batteries. These batteries do not have a lot of power in them. I'll charge that for a second. But I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. I think this should work. For the uh, 
final piece here. Of course they don't fit. Ugh. See, these are for the potentiometers, the slide pots that I was planning on buying. They don't fit on this. I'll have to like Dremel them out or something. That's super disappointing. Well, on that terrible disappointment, On that terrible disappointment, I guess I'll uh, catch all on the next one. Or, I don't know, I'll be back in a minute. We'll, we'll make sure everything is actually charging properly. And uh, I guess you'll find out in, in a minute, in a second here. But, can't really see all three of them red light. I'll be back. Alright, so this thing's been charging. Uh, this last one finished up first. That battery is fully charged. The other two are still charging, however. Oh, just kidding. Now all three of them are charging again. Um, these are tremendously shitty batteries, and I put them through a lot, so I'm not surprised that they're acting kind of funny. But I also figured out the issue with uh, this module, why it wasn't working. Um, the fuse I put in, I popped it, and that was not a resettable fuse. So I've since replaced that. But, just for shits and giggles, let's try this thing out, I guess. See how well it works. Um, I guess I'll wedge that up so you can see it. And I'm just going to go ahead and connect my leads up to a uh, SP here. And hopefully, nothing blows up. Ta-da! You can see it's pulling 0 .45, 0 .045 amps. If I turn the light off, it should drop down. Yep. Nice. I think this thing is going to fit into my uh, toolkit very nicely. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out something. Figure out. I, don't, I still have to get some battery holders before I can really do anything with it. Um, and then I guess I need to make those changes I wanted to make. We'll try out a new board. Look at that mess on the back there. But otherwise, man, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty pleased with this thing. Oh, and I dremeled out the, uh, slider knobs here to fit these on. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Um... I'm pretty pleased with it, especially for the total cost. This thing only costs like 10 bucks in parts beyond the PCB, maybe 15, not counting batteries, of course. But yeah, I'm super stoked. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.